This is Mike Abernathy, Director of Business Resources here at NSCA, and thank you for joining us today, um, as I know it's the time of year. Before we get going, um, let's take care of a few housekeeping items. Uh, first of all, all participants are on mute. Uh, we do encourage you during the webinar to ask questions by submitting them via the chat box. And, and at the end of the presentation, we'll, we'll cover those questions during a Q&A session. Also, today's webinar is being recorded. We'll have opportunity to an archived version of this webinar by going to nsca.org forward slash webinars. So today we'll join Rob Simopoulos of Defendify, uh, NSCA Business Accelerator Partner, uh, where we will hear from fellow integrators and, and peers as they will share insight uh, and lessons learned on cybersecurity and how it's affected their business and actions um, and steps that they are taking to protect themselves as long as well as their their clients. So first, I'd like to introduce Rob. Rob Simopoulos is the co-founder of Defendify, an all-in-one cybersecurity platform that makes cybersecurity possible for small business. Rob is passionate about small business as he is about cybersecurity. 20 years in the security industry, he has received awards and recognition many trusted industry experts and publications and Rob is in Defendify is based out of Portland Maine Rob welcome and thanks for joining us today we look forward to learning more hey thanks for having me Mike I really appreciate it it's not just Portland Maine it's snowy Portland Maine we've got a, a nice snowstorm coming in through here hey I, I'm really excited about um, today and, and having our panelists here um, we're gonna have a wonderful conversation about cybersecurity and I can't thank these folks enough for, for coming on board here and joining me um, today to, to share their thoughts and experiences on the cybersecurity front. I want to start off with just a quick introduction on um, each of these companies and the individuals who, who are here today. And I think you're going to be, um, you know, if you don't know these folks, I'm, I'm going to be surprised. But, um, you know, the organizations that they're part of are, are really special as well. Let, let's start off with Brandon. So just to tell you a little bit about Conference Technologies, uh, founded in 1988, and uh, you know their whole goal has been to provide custom superior technology services. You know, and they're including design, engineering, training. Um, you know, under the audiovisual and visual control systems, and their model has really evolved a lot to the point now where they're developing IP network design, video conferencing, webcasting, collaborative systems, unified communications, uh, and they'll continue to do that as technologies continue to advance. You know, tell you a little bit about Brandon. Um, he's got degrees in electrical engineering and computer engineering. He joined uh, CTI in 2008 as a design consultant. And uh, as one of the top performers there, he was promoted to vice president of integration in 2014. And uh, in 2016, uh, along with completing his MBA, he was promoted to chief information officer, uh, taking responsibility to help CTI's growth in IT offerings and strategies. So excited to have Brandon here. Thank you, Brandon, for being a part of it. Um, tell you a little bit about Christina and, and her amazing company, um, ClearTech Media. So ClearTech was founded um, to provide something that every client deserves but hardly ever receives, and which is really the peace of mind that comes from knowing that their needs are truly being met. Uh, their organization is part of the USAV network of ProAV specialists, and that gives them access to resources that reach over 88% of the top 50 metropolitan areas in the United States. Um, it, you know, it gives them the ability to service basically clients across America and provide local expertise and high standard of service that makes ClearTech an industry leader. Um, Christina is an awesome person. Every time I get to go to an NSCA show, I always love chatting with her. She's the president of ClearTech um, and the company was founded in 1983. She's got 24 years of experience in the commercial AV industry, you know, holding many different key positions like sales and executive management. And over the years, you know, her company and herself have been working with some really impressive organizations, uh, Sempra Energy, JPL, NASA, Southern California Gas, Pepperdine University, Caltech, USC, and that's just a few to name. Um, she's received multiple achievement awards, including Manager of the Year, and as well as 13 top sales achievement awards, pretty amazing. If you don't know, uh, Christine is also on the board of directors for the NSCA. And uh, she started servicing, serving there in uh, July 2017. She also serves on the Executive Committee of Commission on Voluntary Service and Action, tackling uh, problems of poverty, healthcare, housing, and more. And she's on all kinds of other boards like uh, IFMA um, on the, in the LA chapter and um, 
the Association of Strategic Planners and LA chapter as well. So she's doing some amazing things. And last but not least, uh, let me tell you about Randy. Uh, Randy's organization, Sound Solutions, um, is a Missouri-based full-line integration company. Um, and they have been providing quality long-term solutions since the late 1960s. So as you guys can see, these businesses have been around for quite a while. Uh, they've involved into one of uh, the Midwest's leading quality uh, surveillance integrators and have a diverse team that has decades of experience in the surveillance and AV industries. About Randy, uh, you know, he's the president of Sound Solutions, a full line integrator, and he's got 40 years there with the company. He's been dedicated to providing video surveillance, music solutions, and he's also the past president of the International Business Music Association. So now I'm totally out of breath. So I have to take a deep breath here and get started. But um, where we want to begin is get this conversation going. And I want to start off with just sharing uh, a slide here with everybody about uh, this meeting that occurred. So the conference board gets together every year and uh, they bring some of the, the biggest CEOs in the world come there and they start talking about, you know, challenges and economic conditions and so forth. And uh, this year when they did it, one of the key things that came out was, you know, they said, what's, what's your biggest external concern? And the number one response from US CEOs was the concern of cyber threats to their business. So I'm gonna pose this to the panelists and get started here. You know, um, you know, if you think about in your business, you know, what are your biggest concerns right now? And it doesn't necessarily need to be cybersecurity. It could be a whole bunch of other things that, you know, integrators are, are being impacted with today. But, you know, what are your concerns right now? Maybe we start off with Brandon. Brandon, you mind jumping in to, to start off the conversation here? Yeah, no sweat. Um, all right, so at, at Conference Technologies, at CTI here, um, so we've, we've experienced a tremendous amount of growth in the time that I've been here over the past 10, 11 years. Um, I was like employee number 60 or so, and we're, we just crossed 500 and, and all of our planning is based around, you know, doubling every three to four years, right? Um, from, a, from a size point of view. Um, so that means new technology, new people, new processes, right? They're constantly changing and evolving. And, um, you know, you look back at things that you did as a hundred person company or 200 person company, and you can kind of get a little bit uh, sheepish or embarrassed about, about some of those things. And that's just, it's not okay as you grow up and mature. Um, not just internally, but also like the customers we serve. The customers we serve are a lot of times more mature in this conversation than we are, right? So, um, and that relates to everything, but cybersecurity is a big thing there and something they're starting to take a lot more seriously as well. So, um, you know, my side, it's, it's really keeping up with the growth. And anytime you introduce new technology, new people, new processes, your risk of a uh, gap in, in coverage as it relates to cybersecurity definitely goes up right absolutely that's great uh randy any thoughts on this on this topic here yeah speaking from the the old timers uh perspective you know <laughs> I believe, yeah the uh i think one of the biggest concerns uh, that we share as an industry is how do we prepare and navigate the the shift that's really taken place in the industry and uh and how do we, you know, position ourselves to be the future companies, to be the trusted tech guys that we've always enjoyed? Uh, the core of our technology, as you all know, is, is shifted, is shifting, and, and has shifted to practically all IP. And, it, and I really believe it has opened us up, up to new exposures. Our industry has never experienced so much. Uh, I believe there's a clear and present danger for every business, without exception. Uh, having said that, I believe it's important for us to, uh, you know, in the future that we should be developing and embracing the cybersecurity uh, mindset in what we do. Uh, I think it is becoming an essential stone in the foundation of not only our business, but all businesses. Excellent, thank you for sharing that. I wanted to um, to go into this next slide and share with everyone some some interesting statistics. So, you know, we read in the news every day about a new cyber breach. I don't think a day passes when it's not on our LinkedIn or in the newspaper or whatever we're reading. Um, and it's interesting when you when you really start looking at the statistics. And I, I do a lot of speaking engagements. And when I get people in a room, I really like to to you know ask them the question of like, have you ever had a cyber attack at your organization? You know, are you receiving phishing emails and 
things like that happening at your business. And I'd probably say that number on the left is pretty accurate. You know, it says 68% of small businesses have experienced a cyber attack in the last 12 months. I'd say what I see is a survey of about over 70% of people putting their hands up. But the interesting part is that, you know, the research is starting to show that attacks are, are starting to focus more on small business, even though we're, we're reading about enterprise organizations having breaches, you know, about 50% of the attacks are targeting small business. And when we think about systems integrators, you know, they're definitely a, a target. Um, many of them are, you know, touching their customers' networks um, with their devices, deploying IoT devices. Uh, they're storing sensitive data about their customers. It could be floor plans, you know, showing sensitive locations of, of organizations. It could be MAC addresses, IP addresses, a whole variety of different things. What, what I wanted to do is just ask you guys if you'd be open to sharing any thoughts. You know, are you are you seeing weird things at your organization or attacks like you know phishing emails, maybe emails that look like they're coming from you know the executives to the employees inside your business that really aren't? Have you ever had a cyber attack? Who would be open to, to sharing some some experiences here? Anybody oh, on the I, panel? I would love to share a couple of my experiences. This is Christina DeBono, and um, it, this is very. Uh, serendipitous that we're having this webinar this morning. Uh, we actually were a victim of a cyber attack just about five days ago. Um, and uh, it wasn't, it, it turned out it didn't come from our company, um, but our, um, uh, one of our invoice emails was spoofed. And uh, our client, who had received a uh, notification of an ACH change actually went forward with it and ended up paying a significant invoice of ours to a fraudulent account. And um, so that's just something that happened to us just in the past week. Uh, we were able to, and, and I'll go into it later, um, we are a client of uh, Defendify, so we were able to quickly come up with a plan for how to address this, um, but, but this is happening all the time. Within our organization, uh, I have over a thousand phishing emails that come into my email address, and each of our staff have at least a hundred a month. Wow. That's uh and and we we've put to uh a lot of um we track all this. But that just gives you an idea of the extent of this. Yeah, and that's a challenging situation. You you basically had an attacker who uh spoofed or set up a, an email server and, and launched something to one of your customers that looked like it was from you guys, right? Is that what you're sharing? Uh, yes, and as it turns out, it was our customer's email that was being, uh, that was attacked um, because several other vendors were victims as well. What a great example, and I really appreciate you sharing that with everybody. Um, anybody else on the panel want to share any incidents or things that they've seen? I'll, I'll, I'll hit ours. This is Brandon. So, um, so we've definitely experienced the emails, you know, to the, uh, to the CEO, uh, or from the CEO, sorry, uh, saying, hey, wire money, send money, things like that, right? Um, the good news is that our awareness and education, uh, along with some of the tools, have helped pretty much make that a mute point at this at this stage. Um, about a year ago, we did have something pretty serious happen here where uh, because of some compromised credentials, someone was able to get in and infect our entire data center with, uh, with ransomware, basically. Um, the good news is backups were in place, processes were in place, the team team did a really good job of responding, but it was ugly and basically shone a light on on how serious that this could get. And that's that's really the risk, right? It's it kind of can be a knockout blow that can come from anywhere and totally cripple you and you think you got things covered, but you don't. Um, that's that was that was the shock there. It was definitely an experience. That caught you off guard. The ransomware, you know, the, the increase in ransomware is just astronomical. You're hearing about cities, municipalities, so you guys aren't alone. Rand, Randy, anything you want to share with the group here about anything that you've had? Uh, just the, uh, probably five or six years ago, it, it was before cyber was even a word, I think. Uh, we had our voicemail actually hacked and, and from an overseas, our 800 number. And uh, we ended up getting a bill for thousands of dollars from a telephone company. And 
and it was because of uh, <clears throat> uh excuse me uh default password <laughs> oh so, so it can got, happen so someone got in there and started making phone calls well it was it was it was hundreds of calls it wasn't just one and they had a computer that was bits and pieces from what oh, from what i was told so it's it's amazing the the criminal world that we live in so yeah so you've you've seen it as well so you know all three panelists have had incidents occur there and so which sort of supports the statistic that we were showing you guys where you know over 60 percent are, are seeing things happen hey i want to share with everybody here that you know, 90% of cyber attacks, the statistics are saying 90% of cyber attacks are starting with the phishing email. And, uh, you know, if you don't know what that is, you know, it's the practice of someone trying to send, you know, um, emails into your employees, to your executive team, your customers, trying to get them to do something with taking action. And, you know, how these attacks happen, it's it's pretty simple. There's, there's a lot of information about all of our companies today. You know, you can go on LinkedIn, you can go on Facebook, you can go to uh, a company's website and read about, you know, who the employees are and uh, quite often what their email addresses are. All that information's out there. So a cyber criminal who wants to cause crimes, you can gather that information pretty easily and target either, uh, you know, quite often specific people inside of those organizations to get them to take action. So perhaps they try to get them to fill in a form, uh, click a link to go to a malicious website. Maybe they uh, include inside of that email um, some type of attachment that uh, might have some malware. Um, and then, you know, also try to get them to take action to do something. So, you know, it could be, uh, for instance, it looking like it's coming from the CEO of the company to an employee asking them to send customer information there or make, make change in a payment or send a payment somewhere. So these things are happening all the time. And so I know that um, a couple of you mentioned it, but you know, are, are you guys, you're obviously seeing that because you both, both of you folks mentioned it, that you're seeing phishing emails come through. And though, even though you do have, you know, possibly great spam filters and so on in place, they're still landing in the inbox. We see that as well um, with most organizations. But what are you guys doing right now to try to, to eliminate this? We know that, um, they're still coming through. What can you do to help protect them? And what have you done inside your organizations to, to make improvements? Anyone want to share any thoughts there? I can start. Um, one of the things that we're doing is an ongoing uh, staff education program. And again, not to promote Defendify, but uh, we have um, engaged Defendify in this educational program. And we have included in that uh, regular phishing tests with our staff and uh, we're rated and staff members find out if they respond to phishing emails so it's gotten to the point where our staff members are reporting when they get phishing emails and it's almost like a game to them um, and I think this past month we got like a A plus report card because everyone now knows what a phishing email is and um, you know, not to respond and so forth. Excellent. The employee awareness part is, is so key. Uh, Brandon, Randy, anything you want to share on this front? Yeah, this is Brandon. Uh, one thing that, so we're, we're definitely doing similar to Christina there um, as far as the education and testing side. One thing that actually made a huge difference and it sounds so simple was um, we started adding uh, the basically tagging uh, emails as external, that's what we threw on it. Um, anything that came in from a domain other than ours, right? And um, the first week it annoyed some people, but oh my gosh, did awareness go up at that point uh, from, from folks knowing that, hey, this email came in from outside of the organization and to basically automatically, you know, put up your feelers and, and kind of inspect it. Um, it was super easy to do. Yeah, I think that's an excellent thing to do inside of an organization. Absolutely. Hey, 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 Rob, if I can add something, uh, someone on the call mentioned it, 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 it seems like there's more phishing emails this year than ever. And a lot of them are the whole idea of, you know, let's purchase some items from another employee and so forth, even though, um, you know, even though the firewalls are getting constantly updated to catch these items. So even though we're, we're doing all we can, it just keeps coming and coming. Yeah, You're probably seeing that too. Yeah, and the scams vary. You know, we see um, 
you know, a recent one is the, you know, the, the classic gift card scam where these attackers are picking, you know, one of your employees and acting like the CEO and saying things like, hey, you know, I need you to go out and buy a bunch of gift cards and um, scratch the backs of them and send me the pictures because I'm here at a conference and I want to give them away to customers. I've seen, I've talked to at least three to four companies that have lost money just on that simple one. It's really tough. So training and awareness is, uh, in my opinion, is a, a really, really important um, key to cybersecurity right now is educating all of your employees um, on how to identify these types of, uh, you know, these attacks and these phishing emails and what to do when they do receive one of them. Um, so, you know, we hear from a lot of uh, business owners and, and professionals, you know, they're reading about these incidents, they're hearing about their friends um, and their friends' companies having things occur. You know, the question quite often is like, now what? You know, what do I do? And so I wanted to ask you guys, you, you've all taken the steps to start to make cybersecurity posture upgrades in your organization. So kudos to you. You've, you've recognized that it's needed. But quite often what we've seen with security, and this even ties back to physical security, is sometimes it takes a catalyst before you know something, someone makes a change. And I wanted to hear from you guys what they were, and maybe you already shared it, but perhaps we can start with Brandon. You know, what, what was the catalyst that helped you, you know, say to the organization, we got to take this seriously? I mean, the catalyst was definitely, th there were some moments leading up to kind of the big event that we had last year that really pushed us over the edge. Um, but but really it was a lack of um, the rest of the leadership's group in in their their knowledge of this, their, like, like we were, it was just a matter of time before something uh, big happened. And um, we had to make a fundamental change and, and really improve our posture. And it wasn't just for, us internally, but I mean, we were in the business of, you know, serving our customers and going on site and getting on their network and there's responsibilities that come with that. So, so that we have, we have a responsibility to educate our staff so that when they go do work for our customers, that, that they're familiar with this too. And it just, it, but the, the big event last year is what we said, we, we can't continue to say, you know, when we have time, when we have time, it has to become a part of our culture. Uh, absolutely. And I, wa uh, I wanted to add to that, Rob, um, uh, the catalyst for us were a couple things. Uh, we attended the, I believe it was the P2P conference a year ago, where the theme was cybersecurity. And I think it was very, very sobering. And that week on the way to the P2P conference, a company we do business with who isn't that much larger than ours, had uh, the same thing happen to them as what happened to CTI. Uh, they were hit by ransomware and uh, literally the entire company's operations was shut down for weeks on end. And they were being um, held for ransom for half a million dollars. Uh, you know, where their phone systems, uh, they couldn't use their emails. They literally couldn't even have uh, their staff come into the office every day. So um, that was a real eye opener. And when we came back from the P2P conference, we took the sessions very seriously and uh, implemented a, a pretty aggressive plan for our, our business. Good for you guys, that's great. Randy, any final thoughts here? Yeah, I think uh, for me, it was fear of not being uh, well prepared and positioned. Uh, I think, the, you know, our our trusted friends and tech companies and and not around us uh which we compete against sometimes uh, uh you know i i really do believe that everybody needs to look at this i just i really do it's a real deal and uh and, and that's it all right thank you great so here at our company we talk a lot about that you know cybersecurity is not a project so it's not something you go in and you install and you walk away, it's it's really a posture. So it's really about um, doing things in a recurring way, you know, the constant training and awareness and so forth. But, you know, these the gears always need to be turning and they always need to be improving and so forth. Um, I want to ask you guys if you'd be open to sharing, because I know you've done a, a whole variety of different things in each of your groups to, to make improvement and make changes. You know, out of all those things that you've done, whether it's technology or testing or training you know what are the things that you think have have made the the biggest difference so far and you know why is that can i start with randy do you mind starting randy well yeah uh, i think one of the 
I don't think there's one thing that stands out to us uh, above the rest. I think the cyber thing is a, such a multi-layered thing. It's hard to define one thing. I do believe it's uh, to be very, very difficult not to use a company like Defendify, not a commercial, uh, to get real to get a real evaluation on your weaknesses, where you stand today, so you can make uh, forward progress and uh, getting ahead of the game, if you will. Great. And uh, how about Brandon or, or Christina? What What do you think are the is the biggest part? Yeah, this is Brandon. Um, so I feel like you have to do you got to do the training. You got to raise people's awareness because no matter what what technology tools you put in place, you're never gonna be able to catch it all. And to a certain extent, this is a life skill that people need to really understand that you know really wasn't maybe 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Um, I think one of the things, one of the other simple things that we did that really helped after we got through that initial training and getting that program set up was multi-factor authentication, right? Um, pain in the butt, but it, it cut down the, uh, the uh, compromised credentials and things like that quite a bit. Um, and it's, that was pretty easy to turn on, especially if you're in an Office 365 environment. Spot on. Thank you for sharing that. And I think That's a lot of people don't realize that small businesses, um, they on average, I think the number is 20 uh, software as a service applications that they use and their employees log into. So you've got to get that multi-factor authentication turned on all of those. Christina, did you want to share something? Yeah, and, and ditto uh, on all of the above from Randy and Brandon, but one other thing that, that really um, that became uh, very important to us was having that incident response plan in place. And when we had that incident five days ago, we had an incident response plan um, that had been identified and we were able to implement literally uh, within minutes after we discovered this uh, situation. And um, we actually engaged you, Rob, obviously, <laughs> because uh, we work with the Defendify, um, but I felt that was a very important thing to have in place for our business. Excellent, that's great. Uh, and I'm glad we were there to help you guys through that. Um, yeah, I think that um, one of the key things here is that it's about getting started as well. You know, I, I think a lot of times people are hearing about these and coming on these webinars and, you know, sort of putting it out there. But, it, you know, you don't have to go and do a million different things to just even get started. It's really just starting and getting a program in place and beginning um, and improving from there. And I also think it's a lot like the systems integration industry back in back in the day was very, and it still is, but was very focused on safety, you know, training their teams on safety and how to be safe when you're using aerial lifts and ladders and, and so on. I think we're sort of in that same spot where, you know, part of the training plan for all employees is not just about safety, but we've got to start getting into security as well, because there's such a pivotal part in using the technology today. I'm going to go to this next one here. So uh, what we've seen here at Defendify is a huge increase in what we call third-party cybersecurity assessments. And if you're not familiar with this or are not, you don't know what it is, enterprise organizations um, that are probably your customers today are realizing that your company might might be putting them at risk or might be a threat to them. And what I mean by that is, especially if you're a systems integrator, you know, again, your, your technicians are going into their networks and plugging things in, um, quite often they're connecting their computers to their networks, they're deploying IoT devices, they're storing uh, sensitive data and information about, about their organizations, and they wanna know that the systems integrator that they're doing business with today has proper cybersecurity in place in order to protect them. I actually saw an airport bid the other day that um, you know it was all the specifications about the access control and all the things you had to do from the installation, the technical perspective, but there was a whole section on cybersecurity and it said, you know, what do you have in place from a, you know, these are the things you're gonna have to have in place from a cybersecurity perspective if you wanna, you know, win this, this bid. And uh, even one of the line items on there was employee awareness and training. So they're recognizing that even that part of a cybersecurity program is really important. These are some quotes that we've heard from systems integrators in the past year. You know, one of them saying, hey, we've received five third-party cybersecurity assessments in the past year. Um, another person saying, hey, we, we got the contract, but we, we can't get started until we pass the third-party vendor assessment. And I want to share with you, and I skipped forward for a sec. Um, here's some examples of the questions that 
come from these cybersecurity assessments. So basically the customer's um, security team will send an Excel, um, possibly it is something you'll log into to provide the information, but they're asking questions like, do you have policies? Do you have an incident response plan? Have you ever conducted testing to ensure that your, your networks are safe and that um, you know, there aren't any holes or gaps, you know, what's your cybersecurity insurance look like? And then more about how you're gonna protect the data that they're providing to you. So um, for you guys on the panel, you know, have you guys seen this? Have you, have you received any of these things from your customers today? Who would like to go first? Yeah, this is Brandon. I can take it. Um, we, so we absolutely are starting to see that stuff and I guess probably have been for the past year, um, mostly from our, you know, call it Fortune 1000 customers uh, that are, like I said, a little more mature in the conversation. Um, and it, it's all those things, right? It's, it's have you had an assessment in the past year done? Um, you know, detail your, do you have policies and procedures relating to, you know, if an event should happen? And then, and then we're also seeing, do you carry cybersecurity insurance? Um, and I'm just waiting for the day where, you know, where, where all of that becomes required. Ultimately, right now, it feels like they're still measuring risk, but, um, but that is starting to become something that, you know, you, you have to have a good response for, a good plan for or else it's not worth the risk for them to do business with you. It's just not. Right, exactly. Exactly the same thing that we've seen with many other groups. Um, Randy or Christina, any thoughts here? Anything you want to share? Yeah. I'll go. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Christina. Just uh, uh, um, dittoing or, or uh, dovetailing on what Brandon just said, uh, being a small business, um, we uh, have to meet a lot of these requirements. And um, so over the past year, we've put these uh, uh, a cybersecurity program in place, fortunately, because several of the clients we work with, who Rob mentioned, are, you know, Fortune 100 or Fortune 500 customers. And we've had to um, pass rigorous certifications from two of them um, that require us to have a full-fledged cybersecurity program in place. So you're definitely seeing it. Randy? Yeah, I, uh, you know, I see the, and we, we deal with the medium-sized businesses are our sweet spot, okay? They are rapidly, rapidly going towards the Fortune 500 model of cybersecurity, and they're very much concerned. Uh, we just recently landed a, a, a large corporate client based on our cybersecurity thinking uh, posture and preemptives that we already have in place. And, uh, you know, and, you know, the reminder to me was that you might be, you might have done business with this, this company for 20 years, okay, uh, but the dynamic is certainly changing in the world, and I can assure you that the, the sober-minded uh, uh, IT guy in that organization is sitting around the board table making decisions, and that's what they do. And uh, I believe in the future that we're all going to be picked based upon what our posture is. That's going to be a definitely a weighting factor in our decisions moving forward and their decisions on whether they're going to use you as a company or not. So I agree with you. Totally. So I, I think one of the interesting things is, um, you know, we, we work with a huge variety of different types of companies and organizations, but I think this point is so valid. You know, systems integrators are unique. You know, the, the type of work that you guys do, the, the, um, the fact that, again, you're touching networks and getting access to that data is, is so vitally um, sensitive. My question to you guys is, and I, I think I know what your answer is, but I'll let you speak for yourselves. But, you know, as an industry, if we think about the systems integration industry and we think about, you know, just even think about the target breach that occurred, you know, a few years ago um, and how that, you know, had a rippling effect through HVAC and uh, the HVAC industry and so on. You know, from you guys, you know, how, how important do you think cybersecurity is right now for the systems integration industry? Is this something that we should be really taking, taking seriously at this point in time? I think I know your answer, but I'll let you guys speak. Uh, it's Brandon. Uh, so, so this is one of the things that absolutely scares me because I don't know how to, I don't know how to put a, together a completely effective plan and go chase it. Um, we use 
literally hundreds of thousands of products, right? At this point, more and more sit on the network, on a customer's network. And um, and I know that it is not an acceptable course of action to just kind of stick your head in the sand and and pretend that, you know, that the manufacturers all have the responsibility and, and we don't. So um, as a systems integrator, that's kind of one of my big fears. It It absolutely means then that you have to have partnerships and relationships in place both on the customer side and on the uh, vendor manufacturer partner side to kind of navigate these issues um, and make sure that you at least know the risk going in, right? You, you, you can't always solve it all completely, but you can uh, mitigate it quite a bit and you can at least know the risks. And that's really what it's about in this world, I think. Oh, great. Yeah, sh a shared approach here for sure. Christina, what are, what are your thoughts here? Um, I feel that cybersecurity improvements is absolutely critical for our industry and uh, in, in part uh, could jeopardize the very existence of our companies if we don't take this seriously and implement rigorous programs to improve our cybersecurity. What really haunted me, and it haunts me a lot, um, this issue, because uh, I feel that it's one of the biggest growing uh, crimes uh, that that are taking place, and it's it's something that we don't see, and it's very it's very difficult to manage. But what really haunted me was to hear that story about the uh, HVAC integrator who ha was remotely monitoring uh, who was it Target or oh darn it um, one of the major retail chains and ended up becoming the tunnel for someone attacking um, uh, all of their, uh, being able to gain all of their customers' credit card information. It was like 40 million customers. And I think about that because I think about us going into things like managed services where we're remotely monitoring um, our customers and how vulnerable we can become if we don't take this seriously. That's a great point. And we've seen in the IT industry, you know, managed service providers being um, targeted because they do have those remote capabilities into their customer sites as well. So yes, security and AV integrator, integrators who provide managed services really need to button things up. And they, and they will back to the third party cybersecurity assessments. Those IT teams are gonna start to ask questions if they haven't already about how you're performing that, how you're doing that and ensuring that they're, you know, they're as secure as, as you can make them. O over to Randy, what are your thoughts here? You know, per, per Christine's concern, uh, you know, I, I still, I, I, re I will reiterate this, is that it, cybersecurity is a foundational stone to any successful business anywhere. It, 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 we're gonna have to, and as integrators, you know, I think we have a responsibility to our clients to be ahead of it and and honestly to be knowledgeable about it and even though if you're an old guy like me you have to to, to learn about it and uh, you don't have to understand all the details but it, it's important it's so important it's an important it's almost as important as uh, knowing how to read a general ledger thank you um Let's talk about this, um, the IoT, you know, the Internet of Things. You know, all these devices communicating on the network, some of them are cloud-based. Um, you know, the, the growth of that is, is astronomical. 15 billion devices in 2015, and, you know, next year they're, they're saying over 200 billion devices. And the systems integration industry is definitely a part of this. They're deploying these technologies on their customers' networks and supporting them and maintaining them. What I wanted to hear from you guys about is, and you guys brought up the partnership, you know, how it's it's not only about the systems integrators, you know, making sure that they have things buttoned down, but also the manufacturers play a key role here. And I wanted to, to understand if, if the manufacturers that you're utilizing today you know, are they starting to um, help you guys understand how to deploy the techno their technologies in a secure way? You know, I know some of them have hardening guides and they're doing classes and trainings. And then also, you know, are your customers asking you about um, the devices that you're deploying? You know, before you put them in, are they asking any questions about uh, patching and updating? Or have you ever deployed something maybe where the IT team discovered maybe a vulnerability and came back to you and said, hey, 
you know, we got to get this off the network. And anything's any thoughts to share here with the uh, with the uh, with the webinar group here? Uh, this is Brian, and I can I can hit it. Um, so I I actually the good news is I haven't had to get involved in I'll say too too much from a from a you know getting getting the customer involved, getting the manufacturers involved, and having to overcome some challenges. Yes, the hardening guides and and best practices and white papers are something that are becoming more uh, prevalent and something that you know we all need to pay attention to. That's something our engineers are really looking at. I think, as far as I'm concerned, um, the most helpful thing has probably been, especially when we talk about large projects or specific projects, um, typically with, with fairly mature customers, it's those manufacturers and vendors providing an expert or an application specialist who knows how to navigate this with our guys and working hand in hand. So, um, you know, when we're really working through these, these things, that is a good place to start. And then our guys need to have the need to know that they have the responsibility to carry that forward to the rest of our team, so that you know in the next situation we kind of go down a similar path. That's the best answer we have found so far. Excellent. Thank you for sharing that, Randy. I'm going to go over to you. We're probably unique to some of the group, but uh, you know most of our stuff is surveillance related. So most of our conversations with our end, end users and IT directors are more on uh, their network landscape and, and how our, I'll call it dirty network, will interact with theirs. So, and, our, and we generally create a dirty network with any, in our medium to small businesses that we do. So, we so you're doing just, the network we, segmentation. Yeah, um, that's, that's our number one practice, probably, I would say. Yep. So um, it's kind of neat when we talk to different organizations who are trying to promote, you know, cybersecurity from within and getting their, their employees engaged and onboarded. It is like safety. You know, you can do your toolbox talks and, and put some fun around that, or you can do your toolbox talks and, and make them boring uh, from a safety perspective. And I think with the cybersecurity side, you, you got to have some fun with it. And I think that part of that is because it is sort of like a scary topic. Uh, people get a little worried and, and get concerned. Are you, what are you guys doing for, to encourage not only like um, acceptance of cybersecurity, but are any of you doing anything fun around that to try to get some some more engagement? I want to share any thoughts there. Well, I'll share a I'll share a thought. Um, right. Our as you as some of you might know, our company likes to do a lot of fun and activities. Uh, we have kind of a youthful cu culture around here. And so now the person who's in charge of IT actually issues report cards <laughs> for people who <laughs> uh, don't get um, uh, waylaid with phishing uh, emails and so forth. So we actually get rated. And uh, I must say this past month I got an A, a rating. But Good for you, Christina. Nice. <laughs> Job. How about Randy Brandon? Anything you guys are doing? Well, this is Randy. Hey, Randy. Uh, I, I think. Ahead, one, Randy. Okay. One. Of course, we subscribe to the the phishing emails and so forth, and and we let it known around the office uh, if a certain person gets spoofed on a uh, a McDonald's. A corporation a phishing email or whatever and we talk about it and we kind of laugh about it but we we want to keep the serious side as well about it uh, uh, my bookkeeper got uh, fished by you guys uh, on the Facebook one that you sent out okay uh, she just wasn't thinking she said so but uh, it's good it's yeah. Good. So you're talking about the phishing simulations that you guys have in place there. You guys, when your team, if they do interact with a phishing test that's sent out to them, that you guys talk about it and collaborate on that. And I, I think that that's important. You've got to have that open communication. Um, yeah. Brandon. Yeah. So, um, so conveniently enough, uh, October was cybersecurity awareness month, or at least in some parts of the world it was. Um, so we kind of participated in that pretty hard here, made a big push because um, because I, we felt we felt that engagement on um, the training videos and, and phishing tests and all that could be a little bit higher. So 
Um, so part of my team really focused that month on bringing everybody up to 100% participation. So um, we actually got within two or three people of, of getting there uh, the month of October, but we put out videos, put out a lot of, um, of emails, fun things like that, and uh, actually tied some um, KPIs. So we, we have KPIs here and there's some that changed month to month and made the one for uh, October. The bonus KPI um, built around our cybersecurity awareness training and things like that. So um, in the past, we've done goofy things with the passwords. So we get we get reports of passwords that have uh, been potentially compromised, and you see some funny stuff come out of that. So uh, uh, we try and keep it appropriate and, and positive, but it is absolutely we are trying to generate positive uh, fun from that. Kudos to the three of you. I think that's excellent. We see lots of stuff happening. Um, you know, I spoke to an individual the other day who's uh, building some type of, uh, you know, around compensation, even for executives um, inside of their organization. We've seen um, ice cream socials and, you know, having events around it for the, the ones who are the best cyber defenders in their organization. Or if your organization's big enough where the IT team can get a little overwhelmed, it's like even getting first in line. If you, if you do all your cybersecurity training, and you don't fall for the phishing simulations, you know, even being first in line to get IT support. So all types of different approaches. Um, so um, what we do here at Defendify is we build a, or we provide our customers an all-in-one cybersecurity platform to help them uh, improve their cybersecurity posture. And it really includes a number of different layers of culture, technology, policies, plans, testing, all those different things that are in place there. Um, and if you ever want to see how that works, uh, for the people who are on the webinar, we'd love to give you a demo and show you that, how that all functions. But as we close out here, what I want to do is just turn to the panelists and say, you know, if you guys um, wanted to sort of finish things off here with one final tip or a final thought, and we've had lots of thoughts here um, to share with everybody who's on, who's on the call, what, what would that be? Do you mind just sharing that final thought? Yeah, this is Brandon. So, so I think we we kind of actually built a pretty good checklist here by talking about some of the different things we've done, um, and of the stuff that's not mentioned. I'd say, you know, test your backups before you actually need them, um, because because otherwise that that could be pretty nerve wracking there. So, um, test your backups before you need them. In addition to the other things that we mentioned here, I think that's an excellent tip. Tip, um, Christina, do you want to go next? Sure. I, uh, for all of you on the call today, um, I, first of all, um, offer any kind of follow-up that you want to do with me. Um, if you are getting started with your uh, cybersecurity plan, and I encourage uh, everyone um, to take this very, very seriously and make it a critical part of their business model. Thank you. Randy, any final, uh, anything finally you want to share here with the group? I would just uh, say start today. Uh, Rob's not pushy. Their company's not pushy, and that's a commercial. That is a commercial, okay, uh, if you haven't already. Uh, this, I would say, looking back, uh, we started this three years ago, and we're still not where we want to be, but we're really close. So this is not something that you just subscribe to and it's over with. I, I believe that the cybersecurity thing for all of us is living. Uh, and that's it. Thank you. I'm going to go back over to Mike Abernathy and see if there's any questions um, from the group who are in attendance here. Mike? Yeah, we, yeah, we do have a few questions that, that came in. And uh, Rob, I think this one probably is, is, is best for you. Um, is there an actual certification you can receive, like a NIST 800-171 or, or HIPAA? Um, so I, I, really the question is, are, are there any standards we can uh, set ourselves towards? There's a number of different cybersecurity frameworks um, that can be utilized to sort of guide your organization um, to a specific level. You, you mentioned um, NIST is one of them, Center for Internet Security, um, ISO. There's a number of different ways and paths that people can 
can go. Some of them, um, there are ways where you can go through, for instance, in Defendify, you can perform a, an assessment and run assessment tools uh, that will help you, you know, tie into some of those frameworks. Uh, NIST is an example. So it will actually, um, each control level or each, we can call it, let's just call it a checklist to keep it simple. As you go through the checklist, it will compare against that framework. Um, and if your organization completes all that and you get yourself to a good level, some systems integrators are actually going to a certification level where they're getting ISO certified and so on. So that is a, a further step that an organization can go can go to as well. Thanks. Here's another question, and, and this might be one for the panelists that, that see this in, in projects is, have we seen end users attempt to push the cybersecurity requirements on onto manufacturer software and products through the integrator contract? So have you seen proactive efforts from manufacturer community concerning amending their end user license agreement to comply with cybersecurity policy? Sorry, that's a mouthful there, but uh, I, I think it, it affects contracts that we as integrators are working with. So I don't know, Rob, you want to take that one or, or Brandon? I, like I can, I can give my two cents from what I've seen so far and then Rob can probably give a better dissertation. I, when I was talking earlier about the importance of of, um, of having those relationships with, with your preferred manufacturers and vendors and working through it with the customer. It's, it's because I, I, I think that a tendency to hide behind agreements, licensing agreements, um, um, documentation, would, it ultimately I think would be a negative for the customer. And, and while, while you do see examples of that uh, happening, I think that as an integrator, our job is to kind of cut through that and get out in front of it and, and actually just get on the same page with the customer, the vendor, and understand what's going on there and not just hide behind uh, agreements and things like that. So I, actually, I haven't seen it too, too bad, but that is something that I do worry about and fear for. And I think just taking a proactive approach to it instead of reactive is probably what would best serve the customer. Yeah, I agree with that. I'm not looking at, you know, as many RFPs and so on that are coming out from end users as the systems integrators that are on here. Um, but I'm sure that they're starting to ask about specific specifications and, and hardening and so on. I would say as a systems integrator, it's time to really you know, start to select your vendors based on this, their cybersecurity posture. So when you start talking to the manufacturers, you know, start asking them the questions about, do they have hardening guides? Do they have engineers who can help teach your team on how to deploy these devices securely so that you, you know you're putting yourself in a good position with your customer? I think that conversation needs to be happening. Great, thanks. Thanks everyone there. A um, couple more questions. Uh, this is really a looking at how to implement and successfully implement a cybersecurity program. Is it best practice to have a dedicated IT director to spearhead this effort? I'm guessing it maybe depends on the size of your company. That's, I think that's a great question, but I think Brandon, you might be able to share some thoughts on that since you are sort of in that, um, not necessarily IT, but this in that CIO role. What do you think? Yeah, so um, I can say that uh, without somebody driving it here, um, it would have probably, we would have signed up or we would have done a couple things and it, and it would have died. So you, you probably need to find that evangelist and I don't care what position it comes from. It really, they, they need to have an understanding of the business requirements though um, and not just look at it from strictly a technology point of view. Um, you can get wrapped up in that, but you need an evangelist to drive it that doesn't necessarily have to be the same person who's um, administering it, keeping up with the new hires coming in and making sure they get trained and things like that. But you do need somebody to drive it until it becomes a part of your culture. And I've been fortunate enough that in the past year or so, I've actually been able to take a pretty significant step back from that because it's something that uh, the team is engaged on now. And it kind of it kind of is a nice change of pace for them and it gives them some customer interaction, right, with our employees. So. Um, it's it, it kind of grows organically once you can get the seeds planted. Yeah, and I've seen a variety of different things happening. No matter what, I, I agree with what Brand's saying. Um, there needs to be a leadership person leading the charge, and I've seen it successfully happen from the you know the business owner or the CEO who who understands that this is a a huge um, step for the company. And I think that when that happens, then they can really direct the organization from left to right and sort of help them there. In the end, you know, when you do find 
weaknesses and you need to button things up, you definitely need an IT resource to help make that happen. So they're definitely an important part of um, of putting of, of of this program and its implementation. But um, I think the business leadership side of things, because you know, need to be directly involved and in, and in leading the charge here, so that everybody understands in the organization that it's this is a really key part of the business. Okay, well, thanks. So we're going to close out on this question here. Uh, what are thoughts, recommendations for cybersecurity and insurance, first party and third party in insurance? And Rob, that's probably you. Yeah, I'll, I'll share a quick thought on that. So cybersecurity insurance is very, very important today. I think every organization should have it in place. I think you should dive deep into those, you know, those insurance policies and ensure that you're covered for a variety of different things that are occurring, um, including the ransomware and uh, breach of sensitive data and so forth. But it's also like... Um, it's like driving your car. So you, you have car insurance um, and that's great. You know, if you have an accident, it's going to protect you. But at the same time, you need to drive the car safely. And with cyber insurance, it's the same thing. Let's hope you never have to use it, but the insurance policy is there. But the biggest challenge, it's like every employee is driving your car right now. Um, they're all running your computers and, and using your technology and your applications. So um, it's really getting them to all drive safely while they use the technology. And, and that's the big challenge, but 100% have cybersecurity insurance in place. Rob, can I jump in real quick? Just, Please, yes. So from, from our side, we started looking at this really hard at the beginning of the year. And I can tell you, if you've never looked at it before, it's not something you can just, you, you, you wanna just do in like five days, be like, oh, let's, let's just go get cybersecurity insurance. Um, we actually have realized that in order to to get to where we want to go with regards to carrying that insurance, we, w there's multiple things that we need to do. So we built part of our roadmap, our IT roadmap out, knowing we're going to need to get it soon and potentially it might be a customer demanding it right away, but um, it wasn't something that we felt like we could just instantly go get. So we had to put a plan in place to get there and we're working there, you know, at a, at a pace. So just, don't think you yeah. can go just sign up for it right away and it'd be hunky-dory. No, because they're going to want to see all these controls implemented um, in order to give you that policy, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's a, that's a great point. Well, over to you, Mike. Hey, thanks, Rob. Uh, thanks, Christina, Randy, and, and Brandon. Appreciate your insights and, um, and everything here. So, if we didn't get to your questions uh, today, we will follow up uh, via email um, after the webinar from Rob and, and, and myself. So also, we shared a lot of information here today uh, as NSCA providing resources and so forth. Uh, we do have some resources on our essentials library for members uh, under section 11 there. So a lot of that information has been provided by a lot of our partners. Um, Defendify, as well as True North on the cybersecurity insurance and, and, and everything. So we, we, we keep doing our best to, to help prepare um, integrators uh, for this challenge and continued challenge here. So thanks again, everyone.